So it's a pleasure to introduce the first speaker of this afternoon, Lucas Sedi from Bochum. And he will talk about minimal boundaries in tonnelli Lagrangian systems. OK, so thank you very much. Uh, um, so I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity of, uh, to give this talk today. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to talk to you about some joint project with Gabriele Benedetti and Marco Mazzucchelli, which also are also here. And I have to say you that, uh, okay, we started this project, project exactly two years ago here in Rio de Janeiro, so uh, it's kind of nice. And okay, we started with Marco, and then uh, eventually Gabriele joined us, and we uh, finally solved this problem. So roughly speaking, what I'm, what I'm gonna um, talk about today is the existence of uh, a particular certain kind of uh, center families of periodic orbits for tonelli Lagrangian system, and you can uh, think of this tonelli Lagrangian system of magnetic flows, which uh, uh, you have already heard of in these uh, conferences. And uh, particular families, what I mean by particular families of uh, periodic orbits, I mean uh, uh, simple periodic orbits, so embedded periodic orbits, which form the boundary of open subsets of uh, uh, closed orientable or closed surface. So uh, before uh, starting with that, uh, let me uh, introduce the notation. So maybe not everybody is familiar with uh, this topic. So uh, throughout the um, talk, M would be a closed surface. And for the moment, I will also assume that is, it is orientable. Then at the, at the end of the talk, we will see what we can say uh, about the non-orientable surfaces. And L will be a Tonelli Lagrangian. So, and by Tonelli, I mean uh, uh, fiber-wise, strictly convex and superlinear. Okay, a typical example of a Tonelli Lagrangian is a, a so-called magnetic Lagrangian. And uh, okay, so magnetic Lagrangians are of the form uh, one half uh, norm v squared, where the this is the norm induced by a Riemannian metric plus theta of v, where theta is a one form on m. So these are so-called, these uh, such Lagrangians are called uh, uh, magnetic Lagrangians, and the reason being uh, that they model the motion of a charged particle in M under the effect of a magnetic field, which is represented by the differential of theta. So uh, whenever we have a Tonelli Lagrangian, we have an Euler Lagrange flow, which I will briefly recall. So basically, the Euler Lagrange flow phi, I will denote it by phi sub L of T, is a flow on the tangent bundle of M and basically maps, uh, let's say, that phi L of a point in the tangent bundle, which I will denote by gamma naught, gamma dot zero. So phi L at the time T maps this point gamma naught, gamma dot naught to gamma of T gamma dot of t, let's say for all t real, where gamma is a curve in our, uh, in our surface M satisfying the Euler-Lagrange equation. So the Euler-Lagrange equation, which in local coordinates is d of dt dl dv evaluated in gamma gamma dot plus dl dq and gamma gamma dot is equal to zero. OK, so this is the Euler-Lagrange flow. And you, uh, this is, since this is a workshop in conservative dynamics, and we all know uh, that this Euler-Lagrange flow is conservative, but that might mean that uh, the energy is preserved. Yeah? Sorry. 
thank you. <laughs> By that, I mean that the energy is preserved. And let me recall just briefly what the energy function is. The energy function is defined as dL over dV times V minus L. And this energy function turns to be a, a first integral of the motion. So it's preserved by the Euler Lagrange flow. So what we can do is uh, consider an energy level set and study the dynamics on the energy level set. So our goal will be to study say, periodic orbits on, uh, of, let's say, e to the minus 1 e, so of the Euler-Lagrange flow restricted to the energy level e to the minus 1 of small e, where e is a given real number. OK, so in particular, not only periodic orbits, but we would like to study periodic orbits for uh, what are so-called subcritical energy levels. So let me recall briefly what subcritical uh, means. Um, so uh, from a variational point of view, uh, periodic orbits uh, of uh, such an Euler Lagrange flow with energy E are given as critical points of a uh, action functional, which is normally called the free period action functional. So let's say periodic orbits. I will abbreviate that with PO throughout the talk. So periodic orbits of the Euler-Lagrange flow restricted to the energy level set E correspond to the critical points of the following functional. Let's call it S sub E. S sub E of gamma, of a curved gamma, is just the integral we integrate from 0 to p, the Lagrangian. And then we had p times e, where p is the period of the uh, loop gamma. So let's say where gamma, I mean, the regularity of gamma would be no, will be not really important in this talk, but you can think that gamma is an absolutely continuous curve. OK, very good. So we have a variational characterization of periodic orbits. And now we can define what are uh, normally called Manier critical values, which turns out to be really important while studying the existence, when studying the existence of periodic orbits. So there are several Manier critical values. The, one I will need, the ones I will need today are three. So the first, one is, uh, the first one is the maximum of the energy over the zero section. And basically, this tells you that uh, ener for energies above E0, the, pro the fruit point projection uh, restricted to the energy level set is subjective. So the second one I will need is, uh, normal, uh, is usually called the Manier critical value of the universal cover. And there are several equivalent definitions, but the one I will need today will probably be my most convenient for today will be the supremum of all E in R, such that there exists a contractible loop with a negative. So S E of gamma is negative for some gamma contractible. And the last uh, critical value, uh, so this is so called the Manier critical value of the universal cover. And the last energy uh, Manier critical value which I will need is normally denoted with C0, and uh, it's called the Manier critical value of the abelian cover. So it's basically the same thing as above, but we require gamma to be null homologous. So let me write like this, gamma null homologous. 
Okay, so we have uh, uh, inequalities between these critical values. The, uh, it is pretty easy to show that uh, E0 is less or equal than Cu and it's less or equal than C0. Okay, and inequalities are in general strict. So what I mean by that, so first of all, let's look at this uh, inequality here. So this inequality is satisfied uh, C1 generically. So for a C1 generic Lagrangian, this is uh, uh, a strict inequality. And for instance, uh, if you consider a magnetic Lagrangian, this is a strict inequality whenever theta is non-closed. So for, uh, let me give a, uh, let me put a one here. So I will refer with one to magnetic Lagrangians in general. So L as in one, let's say inequality strict if and only if theta is not closed. Okay, and what about the other inequality? Okay, this is uh, of course inequality whenever the surface is a sphere or the, or the torus, but it could be strict, uh, and in general it is strict when, uh, let's say in general, strict when M is a surface with genus at least two. Okay, so uh, now a couple of facts which have been already mentioned throughout this conference. So it is uh, known that uh, such like Euler Lagrange flows are, I mean, let's say su uh, such Euler Lagrange flows are well understood when uh, the energy is above the Manier critical value C0. So let's, let me remind that. This fact I will need later on, so let me write it. So for E greater than C0, then we have that the Euler-Lagrange flow restricted to the energy level set E is Finsler. Okay, so this is a, well, a, a class of well understood uh, uh, Finsler flows. And the second fact I was, uh, I mean, I already observed it, but let me write it down. So when, whenever the, uh, in the, the critical value Cu is uh, strictly less than C0, then we automatically have a surface with genus greater or equal than two. So Cu less than C0 possible only if M is a surface with genus at least two. And what does it mean for uh, periodic orbits? This means that we automatically have infinitely many periodic orbits in this case. So in this case, we have infinitely many periodic orbits by standard methods. By standard. And so what I mean by that is uh, of, okay, the functional, so we, we, we retrieve these periodic orbits as critical points of the functional SE, and this functional turns out to be well behaved if the energy is above Cu, and so what we, what we do, we minimize this functional on, uh, on the connected components of the free loop space, and if we are in a surface with genus greater or equal than two, then we have infinitely many uh, let's say conjugacy classes in pi one, which are not iterate of one of each other. So we get infinitely many periodic orbits, basically uh, for free. So the, I will be mainly interested in energy below the Manier critical value Cu, but for our purposes, we will also need the energy level C0 because a lot of results I will present today will hold also up to the energy level C0. So uh, as I already told you, uh, I will show the existence of uh, families of periodic orbits uh, which are uh, simple and bound over subset. So let me uh, recall briefly some notation I will use uh, uh, throughout the talk. So, uh, so 
So for me, a multi-curve, I will denote it with capital gamma, will be simply a collection of absolutely continuous loops. So gamma 1 to gamma n is a finite collection of absolutely continuous loops. Let's say gamma i from r over pi i z to of course, when we have a, a collection of curves, we can ask that this, this multi-curve is embedded. By that, I mean that, of course, all curves uh, in this finite collection are embedded, and they have uh, this joint image. So by embedded, uh, by embedded multi-curve, I will mean that. Uh, collection of embedded, uh, or of embedded loops which have a uh, distinct image. So, uh, OK. So whenever we have a multi-curve, let's say a year after embedded, I can, let's say gamma is said to be a, and I will need two definitions. So first of all, a homological boundary. And by that, I've, of course, I mean uh, gamma defines uh, a class in the first homology group, uh, group of the surface, and I mean that this homology uh, class is zero. So if the homology class of gamma is zero. Okay, and a, a bit more restricted than homological boundary is uh, the notion of uh, topological boundary. By topological boundary, I mean an embedded multicurve, which is the oriented boundary of an open subset. So topological boundary, for me, will be, okay, gamma is the boundary of some open subset oriented. OK, so now I can uh, finally define what a minimal boundary is. Remember, the, the, this talk is about minimal boundaries. So a minimal boundary is simply a topological boundary which minimizes the action among the set of all topological boundaries. So gamma. Uh, so let, let me denote by B, script B, the set of all topological boundaries. And then I will call some gamma in script B a minimal boundary. If, let's say, with, uh, oh, I forgot, with energy E, of course, we are working with some fixed energy. And the, the point is that this gamma has to minimize the action among all topological boundaries. So Se of gamma is equal to the infimum or the minimum among, over B of Se. And now I have to tell you what this action is, because the action is defined for, for loops, but there is a uh, standard way of extending the definition of the action to multi-curves with just sum uh, the, the action over all cur curves in the, in the multi-curve gamma. So this guy is the sum over all i between 1 to n of Se gamma i. OK, very good. So this is the definition. You may think that this is uh, rather artificial. But actually, it's uh, natural to consider minimal boundaries because what, uh, what is true is that minimal boundaries, actually all components of a minimal boundary are periodic orbits. And not only periodic orbits, but of course they are embedded because the topological boundary is by definition embedded. But they are also locally minimizing the action. So let me write it as a lemma. So gamma. Let's say if we have a minimal boundary with energy E, and I will abbreviate that with E minimal boundary, then 
then all curves, all loops in the, in the collection gamma, let's say for all i between 1 and n, we have that gamma i is a simple periodic orbit with energy E that locally minimizes the action. Okay, so not only we have a periodic orbit, but we also have a periodic orbit which is embedded, okay, nice thing, but uh, more important, it locally minimizes the action. Why are local minimizers uh, interesting for us? Because the, actually it's because the existence of a local minimizer, roughly speaking, implies the existence of infinitely many periodic orbits. So that's the reason why we are interested in, uh, one of the reasons why we are interested in uh, local minimizers. So let me write it in quotation mark because I, I won't be uh, precise about that. But let's say that if we have a local minimizer of SE, then we automatically have infinitely many periodic orbits. I mean, if we had infinitely many periodic orbits at level E would be great, but we cannot do it because the functional SE is not well behaved, so what we can find is infinitely many periodic orbit with energy, let's say E prime, so for almost every energy we prime close to E. So and now I should mention a couple of people, a couple of uh, people which uh, contributed to that. So the first uh, contribution to that is due to Bangert in the 80s. And actually what he proved uh, was a waste theorem for closed geodesics. So basically what Bangert proved is that on S2, if you have a waste, so a local minimizer of the, le of the energy functional, then you have infinitely many closed geodesics. So, and, the, um, and this... Uh, uh, this is the, basically the idea that uh, uh, Abundandolo, Macarini, Mazzucchelli, and Paternine, uh, they, I mean, they put this idea further, and they proved that this result for uh, magnetic Lagrangians. So they, they proved the, this the exact for magnetic Lagrangians. So let me write Abundandolo, Macarini, Mazzucchelli, and Paternine. And I will need some more space otherwise. Matsu Kelly. Pattern nine. This I I would say this goes back to two thousand and fourteen, but it was published only this year. So uh, let me write two thousand and then, uh, so for general Tonelli Lagrangian, this was proved by me and Mazzucchelli in 2016. And there are also non exact generalizations of these results, which are due to me and to myself and Benedetti, and uh, for these for the case. Uh, in which uh, M is not a suit sphere, and Marco told you about the, this generalization for the sphere. So these are, this was actually Abondandolo, Aselle, Benedetti, Mazzucchelli, eh, and Taimanov, 2016. So these two are non exact generalizations. Very good. So this is why uh, local minimizers are important. So now the first uh, result I want to, uh, want to talk to you about today is the following theorem. Let's call it theorem one. So what does this theorem say? It's basically that for all energy in the uh, energy range E0, C0, you have a minimal boundary. So for all. E 
in E0, C0, there exists a minimal boundary. Let me call it gamma sub E, because E minimal boundary. OK, I won't uh, really talk about the proof of this theorem. Let me remark a couple of things. So first of all, I should say that if we, uh, I mean, this, this theorem was already known, besides the embeddedness of the orbits, was already known, and it was proved by Taimanov in the 90s, and by uh, Contreras, Maccherini, and Paternine in the special case of uh, uh, magnetic Lagrangians, so for L. In one, we have uh, so a theorem so without embeddedness. Was proved by Taimanov and independently by Contreras, Macarini, and the method uh, used are, are rather different. And let me tell you something more about this. So Contreras, Macarini, and Paternine's method, uh, as a, uh, let's say, geometric, is comes, comes from uh, geometric measure theory. So, uh, and they use ba basically a minimal currents to prove, to prove this theory. While Taimanov's method is more, let's say, minimization method, uh, Taimanov uh, minimized the the action functional over the space of so uh, over the so-called space of films. So what uh, what what do you, what the, we did was basically uh, uh, take some uh, the ideas of Taimanov's proof and extended them to the general case of Tonelli Lagrange. It doesn't seem to me that this geometric measure theory uh, approach extend to the to the uh, to the general Tonelli setting. I mean, it, it seems to me that it works uh, at least at the first glance only in the electrom in the magnetic setting, not in the general setting. So uh, this is the first thing I want, uh, wanted to say. Another remark is that this theorem is wrong, is false if we consider energy below is zero. So remark. So theorem is false if we consider energy in uh, the range minimum of the energy and easy. OK, so uh, as I said, I won't talk about the proof. I just want to convince you that this theorem, uh, so first of all, there's two. That there, there, there is hope that it, this theorem holds, and I want to tell you something about uh, why the energy C zero plays a role here, why the magnetic critical value of the abelian cover C zero plays a role. So I forgot to mention that this E minimal boundary has negative action. So if we want to, if we uh, compute, let's say the action S E of gamma E is negative. OK. So the, what I wanted to say is that, OK, why, uh, basically, why this action is negative? I want to explain it to you right now. And uh, why it is important that this is negative. So let me, uh, let me write you th this as a, another remark. So basically, this N, uh, this, uh, the action of this uh, minimal boundary is negative because the infimum is negative. So the infimum overall bound topological boundaries of SE is negative. Why is this true for all? Uh, this, uh, this holds for all E between E0 and C0. Why is this true? Uh, so let us recall the definition of uh, the energy value C0. C0 is the supremum of the energies for which there is a null homologous loop which have negative action. Okay? So what we know is that there exists an, a null homologous loop let's say 
null homologous with SE of zeta negative. So this, uh, this loop may have self-intersection. So let's draw a loop with self-intersections. Self OK, what we want to do now is construct a, a topological boundary which has negative action. So how we do it? We uh, use the intersection points to cut our curve zeta into pieces, and we rearrange them to obtain a multi-curve, we null homologous multi-curve with the same action of zeta and uh, with certain properties. So how we do it? We use, as I said, we use intersection points. So let, let me draw arrows such that we have orientation here. So how we do it? So let's start, for instance, from this. So these are the intersection points. Let's start from this intersection point, and let's follow, let's follow uh, the curve zeta. So at a certain point, we will arrive to another intersection point. So our curve would uh, follow this line. But uh, right now, we can do only another thing. We can uh, go this way. So we will go this way until we reach the other intersection point. Okay? And now we do the same thing. We, do, we, we go the other way until, we, uh, until the loop closes. Oh, I forgot to say, up to a, uh, up to a generic, uh, I mean, up to perturbing a little bit the, the curve zeta, we can assume that we have only finitely many self-intersections, and they are all double points. OK, so this is the first loop we consider. Because otherwise, uh, uh, where? Here? Oh, the Here. Yeah. Because the curve, yeah, the curve would do this, would go up the curve. But we don't want, we, we want to change direction. Oh. We, we, have, we want to resolve the, the intersection points. OK? So we, and we do the same for all the other pieces of zeta. So here we have this. which is another curve, and this one. Okay? So uh, uh, this process will eventually stop, and what we get is a multi-curve, which is still null homologous. Let's call it uh, capital gamma. So capital gamma is, in this case, a collection of three curves, but in general, it could be more. So what we have is that gamma is null homologous, in any case, because I mean, it's obtained by zeta, which is null homologous. And also, what are the intersection points of gamma? We only have uh, tangencies here. So we can resolve these tangencies by small, by small perturbation. So what we do is yeah, we, we take a small perturbation here. And what we obtain is a, also here, what we obtain is a null homologous multicurve, which has still negative action because this is a small perturbation, and we started from a curve with a negative action. And this is null homologous, and uh, OK, with negative action. So what the point now? That we want a topological boundary. We don't want a null homologous multicurve. But this is a general statement. Whenever we have a uh, homological boundary, we can uh, write it as this disjoint union of topological boundaries. So basically, we write the gamma as uh, union of gamma of capital gamma i where these gamma i's are topological boundary boundaries and since the action of gamma is negative we need uh, at least one topological boundary with negative with negative action so that's the reason why uh, the energy c0 plays a role and uh, i should mention that we really need to work with multi curves because if we uh, would like to, w to work with uh, embedded curves, then it is possible that we don't find embedded curves with negative action. We really need multi-curves. OK, so uh, that's uh, briefly how we need C0. And uh, very good. So uh, this is the first result. Now uh, let me tell you something about the second result. So the second result is about the existence of minimal boundaries at the Magnier critical value C0. 
So for that, we need to assume that E0 e is different from C0, but as we say, as we see, uh, this is true in most of the cases, C1 generically. So if E0 is less than C0, then there exists a minimal boundary with energy C0. Okay, in particular, we have a periodic orbit at energy C0. This is not a new result. This is uh, well known that we have an orbit at level C0. Was, what is there? This is, was uh, uh, observed at least in Contreras and Macarini and Paternine's uh, paper. Basically, what we have is that the mother set, which I won't introduce, but I will use later on, the mother set is in this, in the, in the two dimension, is foliated by periodic orbit. Okay, and so uh, at level C0, we have periodic orbit. What we show here is that actually we, we don't have a single periodic orbit, but we have uh, a family of periodic orbits with energy C0, which bound an open set. Okay, uh, let me uh, tell you something about the proof of this, uh, of this uh, theorem. So by assumption, we have uh, E0 less than C0. So we can uh, choose a, an increasing sequence of, of energy values which approach C0. So let's choose, uh, choose En, which is an uh, increasing sequence going to C0. And by the first theorem, we have, for each En, we have a minimal boundary with energy En. So and let, uh, let gamma E n b a n e n minimal boundary. And let me uh, recall that the action of this minimal boundary is negative for all n. So basically, what uh, one would do is okay, we have this sequence. Uh, of minimal boundaries with energy converging to C0, we would like to, uh, we would like to extract a converging sequence to some minimal boundary with energy C0. So why uh, can we do that? The reason is that basically uh, these gamma En are embedded. So since these gamma En are embedded, we can f bound the uniformly from above the length uh, of these uh, uh, minimal boundaries. And this turns out actually to be the only compactness we need to pass to the limit. So let's say since gamma an embedded, and, uh, the length of gamma en is uniformly bounded. OK, I will try to convince you that this, tr this is true, that the length is uniformly bounded. So let me uh, assume for simplicity that gamma En consists of a unique curve. So gamma En is a unique curve gamma En, small gamma En. And uh, of course, since it's a topological boundary, it has to be the boundary of some open set, Un. And let me also assume that the Lagrangian, that the Lagrangian is magnetic. So Lagrangian is magnetic. Otherwise, I mean, there is a small modifications in the argument, but uh, everything works uh, fine as well. So let's compute the action of gamma of gamma en. So uh, let me remind that this is negative because it's a minimal boundary. So what is that? If you look, I, 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 of course, I erased the, the the action. But if you look close at the action, this is one half integral from 0 to the period, let's say Pn, of norm of gamma dot En squared. Then we have a plus P times En. And then we have plus the integral over gamma En of theta. This is the action in case of a, a magnetic Lagrange. So what is this? So if you look a bit more closely to this, this is n nothing else by square root of 2 En times the length of gamma En. This is just a, simp a very simple computation. This is a, a, a magnetic geodesic, so it has constant speed, and the constant speed is uh, exactly uh, square root of 2 En. So uh, now, theta, uh, now gamma En is the boundary of the set Un. 
So by Stokes' theorem, this guy here, so the integral of uh, theta along uh, gamma en is, no is nothing but the integral of the differential of theta over un. So this is square root 2 en length of gamma uh, en plus integral over un of d theta. Okay? And this is a uniformly bounded thing. So this is less or equal, let's say in uh, the absolute value of that is less or equal than some constant. So if you see our inequalities, this tells you that the length uh, is uniformly bounded. Length of gamma en is uniformly bounded. Very good. So, and by the way, uh, without the, the embeddedness, we couldn't say this. So, this wo works only if we have embedded curves. Otherwise, we don't have uh, such an estimate. Okay, so we can take the limit, we can pass to the limit, so up, uh, up, uh, up to a subsequence. We have that gamma en converges to some gamma c0. And what is the action of this uh, gamma C0? So the action of gamma C0 is the limit of the action of uh, gamma En. But all these guys are negative, so the limit is less or equal than 0. And if you look a bit carefully what is the action at level C0 of a topological boundary, then you will find that the action of a topological boundary is greater or equal than 0. So this 0 is actually the infimum of SC0. So this tells you that this uh, gamma C0 is actually a minimal boundary. OK. So uh, we have also this. Uh, this uh, minimal boundary is, uh, is at level C0. And now I can, how much time do I have? 15 minutes? Yeah. OK, now we have this uh, minimal boundary with energy C0. What we can do is, OK, we look more closely at this minimal boundary, and we see that this minimal boundary is actually contained in the mother set. So a remark. So gamma C0, is a, let's say it's this is C0 minimal boundary. And if we have this, then let's say that the set, uh, OK, let me, uh, let me write gamma C0 as the collection of the curves gamma 1 to gamma n. OK, so I claim actually that this set gamma i of t, gamma i dot of t, these points, they are all contained in the mother set. Let's say that i is from, goes from 1 to n, and t is any. OK, this set here is contained in the mother set. Let me just recall. This is a very simple observation. I won't do it. Let me just recall what the mother set is. The mother set is the union of all supports of minimizing measures with zero rotation vector. So uh, let me uh, also recall the uh, 
celebrate Mother's graph theorem, which tells you that the, pro the fruit point projection from the tangent bundle to M restricts to an injective map to, uh, on the mother set. So, mother graph theorem. The foot point projector, projection pi restricted to the mother set is injected. So this, uh, these, uh, so we have minimal boundaries which are contained in the mother set and the mother set projects injectively to the base. So this uh, suggests us how to de possibly define, how to define actually, how to define a mother, a sort of an analogous of the mother set for subcritical energies. So uh, let's say analogous. L for subcritical energy. So we fix an energy value E in uh, E0, C0, and we set G sub E at the set of all points of the form gamma of t, gamma dot of t, where gamma is a component of a minimal boundary with energy e. That's gamma of t, gamma dot of t, such that gamma component of uh, minimal boundary, let's say, e minimal boundary. Okay, of course, if we, if we uh, no, this is also, could be also in, at level C0. If we consider G sub C0, then we have a subset of the mother set. And I don't know whether the equality holds. Of course, this is a trivial inclusion, but the other inclusion, I don't know if it's true or not. But anyway, what we have, say theorem three, is that the foot point projection restricts to a, an injective map from G sub E to M. Okay, so pi restricted to G sub E, G sub E to M is injected. Okay, very good. I mean, so far is probably not very interesting, this theorem, but what this theorem uh, uh, allows us to do is to show the, the existence of embedded orbits, periodic orbits also on non-orientable surfaces. So from this, we obtain existence of embedded orbits on closed non-orientable surfaces. Okay, how we do it? Okay, the idea is rather easy. We, we have a Tonelli Lagrange, uh, in a Lagrange flow on a non-orientable surface. We lift the system to the orientable double covering and we apply the theorems uh, we, we proved uh, there. So everything basically follows. So we, we, found the, uh, we found the existence of a, not topological, but homological boundary whose components are uh, periodic orbits but the simplicity embeddedness is not clear because we have uh, embedded orbits upstairs and we, when we project down, we could have self-intersections. And so we have to exclude the presence of self-intersections downstairs. 
And this theorem uh, three is exactly what prevents uh, to have self-intersections downstairs. So let me write uh, M closed and unorientable surface. And L Tonelli Lagrange. Okay, so we lift the theorem, we lift the system to M prime orientable double covering. And we apply the theorem. theorems one and two. So what we get is the existence that there exists for all E in the interval E0, C0. We have a topological boundary, let's say, let's call it gamma prime E, and it's an E minimal boundary with energy E. And now we project the thing down. So we consider gamma E equal to the projection. Let me call uh, the map tau, the map from M prime to M, where tau from M prime to M is the covering. OK, so everything follows besides simplicity. So we now have to show that gamma E is, consists. OK, let's, let's uh, write gamma E as collection of curve gamma 1 to gamma n. We would like to show that all gamma i's are simple and they are, they, that they are all these things. OK, the, the second part of the statement is general not true. They are not this thing in general, but they, uh, the, the only thing that could happen is that two of them are the same curve. So what, what we cannot have is that the two of these curves, gamma i, they intersect somewhere. If they intersect, they need to be the same curve. OK, so what, is, what I claim, so gamma i is simple for every e, for every i. And also, what we also have is that either gamma i is equal to gamma j, or they have this joint image. OK. So how, how we do it? So let's, uh, for, for, first of all, let's assume that gamma i of some s is equal to gamma i of some time r for some uh, s which is not r. OK, so what we do is we consider the, the curve gamma e prime. Okay. So the, the lift of, uh, so gamma E prime is nothing else but the lift of gamma E to the orientable double covering. But we, don't, we, don't, uh, we have another lift, which is uh, basically we, uh, if we uh, apply the deck transformation, the non-trivial deck transformation of the orientable double covering, we have uh, another minimal boundary. So let's say that gamma E prime and F of gamma E prime, they are minimal boundaries. Where F from M prime to M prime is the non-trivial deck transformation.
OK. So what does it mean that uh, these points are the same? So when we lift to the orientable double covering, this means that gamma i prime of s has to be equal to f of gamma i prime of r. Because we already know that gamma i, uh, the lift of gamma i is an embedded curve. Our theorems were all about embedded curve. But if we have this, then we can apply our theorem. And this, uh, if we rephrase the theorem, this is telling us that for all times, actually we have that gamma i prime of s plus t is equal to f of gamma i prime of r plus t. So actually, gamma i prime is the same curve as f of gamma i prime. So and if we project down that, this tells us that actually we cannot have a, a non, I mean, we can have all this, a, an intersection only if it's s is equal to r up you no know, modulo the period of the, of the curve. So, and with the, same, uh, with the same argument, you actually show that either gamma i is equal to gamma j is, the, is exactly the same argument, or, or they have this joint image. Very good. So this is telling us something about the uh, existence of embedded, uh, uh, of a simple orb, simple periodic orbits uh, on non-orientable, uh, on non-orientable surface. So let me just uh, write down the theorem. I also wanted to talk about uh, uh, topological boundaries whose uh, components are uh, simple periodic orbits just above the many critical value, but I, since I don't have enough time, I will just write down the theorem for non-orientable surfaces, and then I will stop. Theorem four. So let's assume that M is non-orientable. No. L is a tonelli Lagrangia such that E0 is less than C0. And then for all E in the interval E0, C0, there exists a homological boundary gamma E such that the following holds. So first of all, every component of gamma E is a simple periodic orbit that locally minimizes the action. Let's say gamma I of gamma E is a simple periodic orbit which locally minimizes the action functional. And as I said, either gamma i is equal to gamma j, or they have this joint image. OK, and of course, this gamma e lifts to a topological, to a minimal boundary on the orientable double covering. So gamma lifts to a uh, minimal boundary on m prime, for where m prime is the double covering. So I think I will stop here. <laughs>